Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Good evening, Virtuous Living. So usually I'm on in the morning. This is my first time going on in the evening. So good evening, Virtuous Living. Good morning, Proverbs 31 women. Good, or sorry, good evening, everyone. See how I'm still saying good morning because I'm so used to greeting you guys in the morning. How are you today? I'm so, so happy that I got to at least interact with you a little bit um, today. I did not get a chance to go on this morning, but I'm like, you know what? Top and tea is still gonna go on. I couldn't get on on my regular time, but it's still gonna go on. Hello, Lene. Thank you for joining in. And hello, those other people that just came in. Go ahead and tell me who you are so that I can greet you. I am super happy to be able to uh, be a part of your night routine. Usually I'm a part of your morning routine, but today I'm a part of your night routine. So it's an honor. It's a pleasure. Come on in. Let me know who you are. And let's get started. You are watching Topics in Tea. I am Natanya. You are watching Virtuous Living. How are you, Lene? How was your dinner with your kiddos? So today, um, let me show you my mug. You know how we do this. I'm still drinking my tea, okay? I almost drank hot chocolate today with you guys because I am, um, it's cold here. I know we're expecting a snowstorm in about two days. So I was like, okay, this is totally like a hot chocolate time or a coffee time, but I'm like, no, we usually drink tea. I'm gonna drink tea. Um, um, so anyway, today I'm having out of my mug that says, wake up, be awesome and repeat, wake up, be awesome and repeat. And I'm drinking today a hi, Mama J. Good morning. Good. So look, I'm gonna say good morning because I'm used to it, guys. Good evening, Mama J. Um, today I'm drinking strawberry dragon fruit tea. Now, usually I'm telling you guys a tea that I either made myself or some kind of concoction that I thought up of throughout the week, and I make it and I tell you what's in it and how I came up with the concoction and all that kind of stuff. But today I want to shout out Mama Celeste from my church, United Faith. Hello, Mama Celeste. Um, it was um thank you mama j thank you mama j hello servant linda hello 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 so um the strawberry dragon fruit is because mama celeste yesterday gave me my christmas present and it was um a dunkin donuts gift card so you guys know i love my coffee i do like dunkin um so, yep, see, Mama J's drinking orange ginger tea. Yes, everybody else, let me know what you're drinking. <gasps> Hello, uh, Miss England. I'm seeing you online. Does that mean we have a baby? Because I know you took a break to give birth or because I know you was getting close to your due date. So please let me know if you gave birth already or if you're in the hospital or anything like that. So I'm super excited. And Lene says, I'm on my Natanya tonight and cooking dinner for the rest of the night and multitasking. That's how it is. That's how it is. And shush. Okay, I'm quiet. Okay. I, I won't make the baby come before before the time. So I am quiet. <laughs> Sam loves your half right. Thank you, Samara. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I had to teach you how to do them. So um, the strawberry dragon fruit tea I'm drinking is from Duncan. Um, I really like this tea. Today they kind of, I don't know, they did something different today because it tastes like an artificial sweetener. So I'm not sure what they did, but it's usually good. It's, I, it's, I barely ever have an issue, but I think the lady just kind of wanted to get me out of drive through anyway. So um, yeah, so definitely try that. So let me tell you the benefits and then let's get into this word, okay? Let's get into this word. So I said it was strawberries. Strawberry is good for heart health and blood sugar control um, is what Google says. It's also a great of vitamin C and magnesium, and it has vitamin B9 and potassium. It's very rich in antioxidants and plant compounds. So strawberry is our first ingredient there. And then I told you it, I am drinking the one with the dragon fruit. I've been tearing up strawberries lately. Uh-oh, we got a strawberry baby then, huh? You know, there's an old wives tale that says that whatever the mother eats the child will either love or hate it whether that's true or not i don't know but i can say that every time i see a mother eat something the whole time she's pregnant the baby does either love it or hate it my mother ate catfish and guacamole when she was pregnant with me every single day and dove chocolate those are three things that i absolutely love when i was a kid when i was you know guacamole was like it was really weird but then I just became a love of mine. And actually, fun fact about me, in case anybody cares, I don't know if I should really share this on live, but I'm going to anyway, okay? Um, my birthmarks are uh, all green. And there is some kind of condition, I can't remember the name of it, but it does happen, like, because my mom ate all that guacamole when she was pregnant with me, my birthmarks are green. Now that I'm getting older, they're turning a little bit more blue, 
like bluish brownish and you know I'm, I'm darker now than I was when I was a kid so they're turning a little bit but they're still kind of more on the green side so fun fact so I hope your baby doesn't have red green mark uh, red uh, birthmarks England <laughs> you just saw a picture about what I'm saying yesterday yes yes it's it's a it's a thing and um yeah it's because of the guacamole but whatever it's totally okay so dragon fruit is um hey mitch how are you i haven't seen you since college how are you i know that you're married now to who you were dating when we were in college because i remembered her name because it was close to mine so it's nice to see you thank you for joining topics and tea today so dragon fruit is rich in antioxidants okay it's naturally fat free and high in fiber helps lower your blood sugar contains um uh oh and sorry it complaint it contains things that help your that healthy bacteria in your and your and your gut i'm not going to get tongue-tied today and it also strengthens your immune system okay so we've got strawberry dragon fruit tea those of you who are just joining today i'm drinking out of my wake up be awesome and repeat mug wake up be awesome and repeat all right let's get into this let's get into this it is called she's a keeper she's a keeper hey mitch says hey girl hopping to listen love seeing your posts and seeing your journey with god thank you thank you thank you thank you i that i appreciate that thank you so much so they i hope you can join more often so today we're talking about she's a keeper she's a keeper um that term that little that little sentence right there has been thrown around um a lot you know when people talk about when you find that great woman you know she's a keeper yeah i'm gonna keep her blah 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 we kind of throw it around but god gave me this from titus 2 titus 2 says the aged women likewise that they be behave that their behavior becometh holiness not false accusers not given to too much wine teachers of good things that they teach the young women to be sober to love their husbands to love their children to be discreet to be chaste to be keepers at home to be good obedient to their own husbands that the word of god not be blasphemed so we say come well at carmax buying to you reverently beautiful and go thank you thank you so much mario and i pray great favor as you are car shopping pray great favor that the lord give you something that's easy it's affordable and something that is to your liking so yes um be careful and, and pray before you buy pray before you sign okay so we are from titus 2 3 through 5 i just read you the verse so you guys know my channel is called Virtuous Living. My business is about um, being a virtuous woman in today's time. And I'm super excited that, you know, God has given me a lot of download of things that I was going to start soon to really amp up that vision that he gave me to start Proverbs, you know, this this ministry slash business in the first place. But um, I do support a lot of other channels and a lot of other women who have a similar mission to mine, you know, teaching women to be Proverbs 31 slash Titus 2 um, women. You're waiting for the keys. Amen. All right. I'm excited to see your new blessing, Mario. Um, and so my only issue, and this is no shade towards no, no other channel. My only issue is that all of the virtuous women, um, or Titus two channels, when they get to the part that talks about when God says that we women are keepers at home, not of the home, but at home is the original translation. As far as I can see, um, they stick to the words cooking and cleaning and having babies. I get that. We should cook. That's our responsibility. I agree. Wholeheartedly agree. That's our responsibility to cook for our families and provide food for them. Uh, we should clean. Yes. Proverbs 31 woman should have an orderly and tidy home uh, to the best of our ability. I understand. I agree. Um, you know, we should be obedient to our husband. Yes, I agree. We should have babies until we have more stretch marks than Tony the Tiger. Yes, I agree. Okay. You know, but what else can we keep? And that's what God was downloading to me is that there's much more than cooking and cleaning when it becomes being a keeper at home. And I feel like all the other channels were missing that. So that's what we're going to talk about today. God gave me 10 things that a virtuous woman keeps. Hello, Alicia. I love you, Alicia. Um, God gave me 10 things that a virtuous woman always keeps outside of cooking and cleaning and having babies. And I want to say, yes, I wholeheartedly agree. That is part of what God wants us to do as women. It's part of our mission. It's part of, you know, what he's calling us to do. But there's more things that he's calling us to in this hour. And we're going to talk about it. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Good morning, Miss. Or sorry. Hello, Miss Hensel. I am so, y'all, I'm, I'm going to keep saying good morning because I keep thinking I'm on my morning show and I'm not. So just, y'all know what I mean hello 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 so here we go 
Um, Titus 2, um, the actual original translations, and I don't speak Greek, so I'm going to spell it for you to look it up yourself. The word is O-I-K-O-U-R-O-S, okay? I'm going to try to, I may butcher it, but I'm going to try, okay? Oikuros, okay? Oikuros, and that word means keeper, warden, guard, to be aware and watching. Keeper, warden, guard, to be aware and watching, Okay? I was like, well, that right there will show you that when God says to be a keeper at home, he wasn't just talking about cooking and cleaning right there. When we look up the original translation of this, um, of that, of that word in the Greek. But the first thing we're going to talk about today, remember I told you I've got 10. The first thing we're going to talk about is keeping a prayer life. The virtuous woman, the Titus II woman, the woman of God, we have to keep a prayer life. If you do not keep a prayer life in, with the Father, your life is doomed in any way. There's no matter how good you can cook, how good you can clean, how good you can be a great wife and a mom. If you don't keep a good prayer life with the Lord, it's not going to work. It's not going to pray prosper. Yes, I know. I've seen um, non-Christian women. I've seen non-Christian, uh, you know, or, or other religions. Um, they seem like they have a great home and all that kind of stuff. But I'm not talking about them. I'm a Christian. I'm talking to the Christian women who live according to that word of God. We have to keep a prayer life. We have to daily ask God for wisdom, daily ask God to teach us and mentor us and mold us and shape us into being Proverbs 31 women and Titus 2 women. It doesn't just come naturally it may seem like it comes naturally but it all comes from the wisdom from the father so the first thing that we have to keep is a prayer life with God a prayer life with God we have to get up in the morning and we have to make it a point to make sure that God stays a center and that nothing takes God's place and I was a little bit convicted this week because um I have a friend I'm not gonna call her out but I have a friend and I told her I was like you know what I really been slipping on my prayers this week and I've talked to you more than I've talked to God and she was like ouch and I was like yeah I know and and it was no shade to her but it was just telling me okay wait a minute I'm I'm making sure that I talk to you every day but how much time did I spend with the Lord how much time did I spend listening to a sermon that's going to feed my spirit how much time did I listen to my worship music how much time did I do this so a virtuous woman makes sure that she keeps God first and she keeps a prayer life so evaluate your day did you talk to someone on the phone more? And Lene, <clears throat> Lene, you and I talked today and I talked to you more than I talked to God today. So <clears throat> we got to work on that. I got to work on that. I'm not calling you out. You weren't the first person I was talking about. I'm calling myself out. But I'm just saying, as I am as I just said that, it clicked to me. Like I definitely talked to someone more today than I did to God. So let's make sure that we keep God first in all things. The next thing a virtuous woman can... <laughs> Lene, the next thing. So, so fun fact, people. Lene and I have a special connection for multiple reasons. But one of my favorites is that her name is Lene and my middle name is Lene. Um, and then our, uh, we have a relative who shares the same name and I won't call them out but they have a rel we have a relative that shares the same name as well. So Lene and I have a very special connection. So, and then I always say I share her babies because her babies are my babies because I love them. So, yes. So, anyway, the next thing. So, after we keep a prayer life, a virtuous woman also keeps peace. She keeps the peace. Now, remember, let's go back to what I told you that Greek translation was. It said that, um, or koros, if I'm saying it wrong or saying it, you know, you guys know to look it up. Um, it also means keeper, warden, guard to be aware and watching. So when God gave me this, I was like, you know what? If I'm keeping the peace, I need to be aware of who's coming in my house. I need to be aware of, of what conversations are going on. Be aware of who my kids are talking to. Being aware on, on uh, what strife is going on. Who's arguing? Who's saying what? We have to keep the peace. I also have to be careful. Now, I'm not I'm not married. I don't have any kids. I have all my friends' kids are my kids. So those are when I ever say I have my kids those are who I'm talking about or the kids I'm over at church I would even say as a virtuous woman you even have to be careful on how your kids see you talk to your husband right do they see you put him down do they see you even when you're angry we all have angry moments I had a fail last week someone made me angry and I low-key snapped and I was just like that is not my natural personality and that was not virtuous. And I kept telling, you guys know Miss Octavia comes in here all the time. And I was like, Miss Octavia, I can't believe I reacted that way. Blah, 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 blah. And she was like, it's okay. And I was like, no, it's not virtuous. It's not virtuous and blah, 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 blah. And I should have kept my peace. That was something I failed at in that day. I did not keep my 
peace. But um, we have to be careful of who we talk to. We have to be careful that we're not adding fuel to the fire. We have to be careful on our tone. We have to be careful on, um, on things that we let progress in our family. We have to keep the peace. So we keep a prayer life and we keep the peace. And that is my, my spiritual mother watching. You guys, hi, Mommy V. She, she, she's just my first time seeing her live on our show. I know she sometimes watches, um, she watches the replay. So, which probably means dad is watching because they're always together. So, hi, mom and dad. So, we keep prayer life. We keep the peace. The next thing we have to keep as a virtuous woman slash Titus 2 woman is we keep motivation slash vision in the home. Motivation slash vision in the home. And what does that mean? It means are you living in a house with bums who sit on their bum. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Are you living in a house with bums who sit on their bum? Are your people, are your people in your house staying motivated? Is everyone trying to achieve their dreams? Is everyone going after something? Or is everybody sitting there watching video games and everybody sitting there watching, you know, ratchet movies and stuff like that? And oh hello um miss grant how are you how are you hello and she i know you say you watch replay sometimes so it's nice to see you live and give my beautiful cassidy a hug for me your baby cassidy so yes we're talking about being a keeper of the home we're breaking it down more than cooking and cleaning like a lot of people say for virtuous women we're not dismissing that we know that's a part of our assignment from god but we're also talking about keeping other things for those of you who are just joining so we keep motivation is i'm on number three keeping motivation and keeping vision in the house we have to keep people encouraged you know the woman is the glue of the house the woman is the one that you know is is keeping people motivated keeping people pumped up you know if you have a mom with the eeyore spirit as my cousin used to call it you know we call it the eeyore spirit because ever watch winnie the Pu winnie the Pooh, you see, you know, the donkey Eeyore, you know, Pooh would be like, hey, Eeyore, hey, Eeyore. And, you know, you know, Eeyore would be like, hi, Pooh, hi, Pooh. Like, and he would just be so depressing. And you're just be like, oh my God. And some moms are like that. So the mother needs to be the one that's still pushing their baby for it, still saying, baby, you can do it. Baby, I know you didn't make it this time, but you're going to do it. Encouraging her husband. He lost his job. Your house doesn't fall apart. You're still keeping the motivation. You're still keeping people to say, you know what? Your dream is still achievable. What you want to do in life can still happen. I may not be able to pay for this I may not be able to do this for you but mommy can one keep a prayer life so I'm gonna keep praying for you and I'm gonna keep praying that God helps you get to what to get to your purpose and get to your destiny and achieve the things that you desire so a woman, a virtuous woman, does not let her motivation in her house die. She encourages and lights the fire under the people, under her care, okay? So we keep motivation. Number four is that we have to keep our mind. We have to keep our mind. Everybody put in the chat, I will not lose my mind. I will not lose my mind. If the devil gets your mind, he's got everything. We've got to keep our mind before God. Is that my... I've got more men today than I've ever had on my show. Hello, Duran, my fried chicken college buddy. How are you? Duran, a quick story, you guys. I love Duran from the bottom of my heart. He is my, um, my, uh, he, he's more than just my fried chicken buddy, but that's just what I call him. But in college, um, I couldn't wait for him to, um, uh, pick or escort me from class. And we would go to this one chicken track that we figured out later had um what happened to our chicken shot duran did it get roaches or get shut down by the health department we were devastated like we can't believe we were eating there i didn't sense any of that but whatever we always found a chicken spot and even now whenever we get together we i don't know why we talk like we're gonna go somewhere else we go get fried chicken because we both love fried chicken so hello and tell your baby girls hello for me so yes we're talking about being a keeper of the home so we're keeping our mind we're not gonna let the devil get our mind we're not gonna let him um um kill our motivation kill our dreams we're not going to let anything make us lose sanity in this hour i think the pandemic really highlighted the i guess i could say the mental stability 
I guess, of people. You know, people got into more depression being locked in the house, right? People got more in depression of, of people um, dying, dying so early. You know, it, we had that big wave of death. Um, we couldn't go anywhere. We had to wear face diapers. That's why I call them the face diapers over your face everywhere you wanted to go. Couldn't breathe. Um, keep it, yes. Uh, Mama J says, keeping the mind is essential. It's where the battle starts. That's true. That's true. I really want to read the book. If I'm not mistaken, it's written by Pastor Joyce Myers, and it's called Battlefield of the Mind. I'm 99% sure that she's the author, but I really want to read that. And actually, um, the, you know, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. There's actually studies that show that when people think something, it happens in their bodies. So there was this uh, book that my cousin was telling me about. Um, I don't remember the author or anything, but we were just discussing it. That this, you know, there's st there's studies that show that when people think themselves sick, like people can think that they're they're ill or they can think that they have certain diseases and stuff like that, and then it will start to manifest in their body because they 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 started to believe it. They it all started up here in their mind. So I say, as we're saying, we're going to keep our mind in this season and and forever, not just in. This the season we're keeping our mind we need to say okay god i'm healthy i am a good mom i am a good wife i am a good worker i am a good um you know minister i am a good whatever you are i am enough i have what i need to be able to accomplish and to be able to um do things well i'm, I'm not just going through the motions i'm su i'm successful um i have the potential to do better and i'm working on that like all those positive things we have to put in our mind do not let your mind slip do not let your mind get you into a funk and make your household go down just like mama said mama j said when she said it's essential where the battle starts if the battle can attack the mother's mind everything else goes downhill if it attacks my mind let's just go through our other steps how do i keep peace if my mind is cloudy how do i keep the motivation in my house if my if my mouth is cloudy Yes. And Mama J says, and thinking on things that are lovely, pure and good report. Absolutely. And how do I keep a prayer life? I don't want to say how do I keep a prayer life if my, mouth, my mind is cloudy, but I will say this. Um, you want to keep your mind before God so that he can keep giving you the mind of Christ and keep getting things renewed and keep giving you the um, taking out the things that are not of him. So keeping our mind sharp as well and healthy. So keeping your mind sharp will also say thank you. Thank you, Mommy V. Um, keeping your mind sharp. We got to also stop feeding ourselves junk, okay? I'm not talking about uh, anybody's choice of shows, okay? Because you, all, you guys know I love two things. I love violent movies. <laughs> I love me some, you know, good shoot -em ups I love violent movies. Probably shouldn't watch them all the time, but whatever. I love violent movies. And then I love old school, um, like, shows like I Dream of Jamie Sanford and Son and stuff like that. But what I'm saying is keeping your mind sharp is you need to make sure that as you're watching TV, as you're watching things, is it, is it people always, you know, cussing and acting out and, 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 you know, everybody having sex all the time and everybody's, you know, the women. I hate like I hate those housewife shows where it just shows women who are empty headed. It seems like they have no brain but to just be beautiful. Like, are you watching that kind of stuff and absorbing it? Or are you trying to be a, a woman that's feeding things that's going to help you get through some tough times? Feeding your you feeding your mind things that's gonna help you to be a better help to your husband and a better help to your children, a help better to help better to your church, all those type of things. Like, what are you feeding yourself? Um, yes, Mama J says, pray for a stable mind. Absolutely. So we also want to keep ourselves sharp. Um, another thing is Pastor Keith Battle, one of my favorite, um, I call him my internet pastor. You guys know I talk to him all the time. I talk about him all the time. And if anybody has any connection, like, tell him, like, I am, like, his number one fan, okay? So um, he does something called info sponging. And that's something that I really want to start soon, info sponging. And what that means is, is that you... Um, you read a little bit of every day about something that you're not interested in. So um, let's just say this. Everybody know, I'm not going to say that. I'm not even going to speak that over my life. Okay, I hate being outside. So uh, anything outside I'm not really interested in. Um, despite the fact that my favorite place is the zoo. Then that don't make no sense because I love animals. But whatever. I hate being outside. So my info sponging would maybe be reading about nature, reading about plants. I hate flowers. So I may be, you know, reading about plants or reading about outdoor activities. That's nothing I'm interested in. But he says what happens with info sponging is every single day you read something that you would never 
uh, you don't really care about, your brain really absorbs that information and you would be surprised on how much knowledge about random things that you have in your head. You'll be able to carry on more conversations with people in different realms. You'll be able to, um, you know, connect dots. You'll be able to use your knowledge in other areas. So that's another woman that as a virtuous woman, we can keep our mind sharp. Info sponge, that only takes like five, six, seven minutes a day. Read an article that you never would read just for the knowledge. You'll be surprised at how much your brain grows or how much uh, how much uh, knowledge you acquire. Hello, Miss Deborah. How are you? Hello. So we keep a prayer life. We keep our peace. We keep our motivation and vision. We keep our mind. The next thing a, a virtuous woman does is she, is that my cousin? Marshall? Is that you, Marshall? Let me know if that's you. Um, uh, she keeps her family's secrets as number five. She keeps her family's secret. Pray by making yourself uncomfortable. This grows yourself larger. Yes, absolutely, Mitch. Absolutely. So keep her family secrets. This one's so important, okay? God has given me another topics in tea and it's called, hello, Miss Tori. Um, that is, Miss Tori is Mordecai's, um, uh, social service agent. Okay. My dog, you know, everybody's always defending when I'm talking about him, bad about him on the internet. Miss Tori always comes to his rescue. So he is laid out on my bed right now, Miss Tori. So you know where your client is. He's laid out on the bed and he is fed for the day. And I had to show you something really funny next time I see you. Just remind me about him. So we keep our family secrets. Um, there's another topic in tea that God has given me about women talking too much, right? But I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about that right now, but I'll just say the old saying says loose lips sink ships, right? Loose lips sink ship. You women, we have to learn how to keep our mouths shut. And I am not saying that, uh, I'm pro people not, um, Everybody needs that friend. Everybody needs that friend that they can confide in. Everybody needs that person that can, you know, help with advice. And everybody needs that person that they can just, just unload on. But what I am saying as a virtuous woman, a woman of wisdom, we have to be wise what we tell and who we tell it to. Things that happen in your house. Yes. Yeah, absolutely, Mama J. Things that happen in your house is not the world's business right? The, the whole world should know your husband's shortcomings. The whole world should know uh, your child is, is doing bad in school or acting up in school and everything like that. Yes, people close to you may need to know this. You may need some help. You may need some financial help. You may need some counseling. You may need something. But we have to be careful on what business we share, especially on social media. I can't stand to see women blasting their families, blasting their whole business on social media. That is not... Uh, it's, Social media is not a place for your garbage and for your laundry. I can't stand when people put stuff on. Yes, exactly. Too comfortable sharing your life stories. Absolutely, Miss Hensel and absolutely Mama J. So we have to be careful of the things that go in our house. We have to keep our family secrets. Um, another thing is a virtuous woman, you got to remember the Bible says that the heart of her husband safely trusts in her, which means if he trusts you, he should trust you even with the things that he doesn't want the other world to know the world to know he should trust you with you know the things that may embarrass him may emasculate him may make him look bad to the world um may be taken out of context you know another thing is i'm gonna get to this scripture in a minute the bible says that the proverbs 31 woman's husband is known when he sits among the elders of the land i think i just flip up the words but you guys know what i'm trying to say which means people know him so you should be even more um, cautious on how you act and what you say and what you expose and what you let loose in your house. I really hate that recently I've seen, um, I'm not sure the story, so I'm not trying to lie on nobody, but uh, there's a, a woman online that's literally, well, a, a lot of women people, but the one that's coming to my mind is she was cutting her baby's hair. And she was cutting her baby's hair on live and embarrassing her and saying, you think that you, you so cute and that is better than your schoolwork or whatever she's saying. And my heart was just cringing, not because of the discipline but because of why did you have to expose your child on me on the on the on the internet those things don't die something else i just found out the bible does say that the power of death and life is in the tongue we we know that scripture but something else i found out recently was that words literally like take the bible out of it scientifically words never die they're still living 
So if I'm if I'm exposing my family and I'm telling people, you know, they're this, they ain't this, and my husband always blah, 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 blah. No matter, even if our situation gets better, I still spoke that stuff in the atmosphere. It's still living in the atmosphere. So you have to be careful about what comes out of your mouth. And you have to start praying, okay, God, if I've said things in the past that are now catching up with me, or if I'm saying things that are now manifesting, Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that those things be, re I, I rebuke those things right now in Jesus' name. Forgive me, God, and give me more wisdom of how I speak and who I speak to. Um, the next thing is when you're upset, I can't stand when all of a sudden you and somebody else falls out and all of a sudden you're telling all of their business. A virtuous woman doesn't do that. If she took an oath of secrecy, if she said, you know what, this is between me and you, I won't tell anyone. Just because you and that person aren't friends anymore, that does not give you a pass to go and tell their whole life story to other people. They trusted you at one time, no matter if you love them anymore or not, they should still be able to trust that you were a safe place because you're a virtuous woman who was a safe place so looks like my dog is having a bad dream because he's flinching and he's his paws are moving in his sleep so this is kind of funny I'm sorry it distracted me so yes we keep our families secret using wisdom in all conversations number six is now I may lose some people but that's all right number six is a, a virtuous woman keeps her body a virtuous woman keeps her body slash keeps her image okay now what do i mean um a virtuous woman is not a woman in walmart with bonnets and flip-flops and pajama pants on i i don't and i'm ah okay no that is not who she was because she represents a kingdom it reminds me of like kate middleton or Meghan markle or um any of the first ladies of the presidents we never saw them in that type of a ratchet state not because they ever felt like every single day getting dressed and getting beautiful and going out but because they knew who they represented they represent their husband who was well known to everybody else they represented a kingdom or a throne they represent they represented a um if they show respect for themselves right you every single person watching me right now you are way too uh you are too much royalty you are royal and you're regal and you're beautiful to be out in walmart with bonnets and flip-flops and pajama pants and dirty flip-flops at that and 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 mismatching and your bra showing and just just in the ratchet state that is not a virtuous woman she represents a kingdom she keeps herself together the next thing is she um the bible also talks about how beautiful the virtuous woman i know mama J. her clothes were fine linen and purple this woman thought about her appearance she was not vain let me say that because we know at the end of the we at the end of the scripture it says um Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord shall be praised. So I'm not saying that you need to spend, uh, you know, a whole bunch of time in the mirror. I'm not saying that you got to wear makeup every single day. I'm not saying, look, I couldn't comb my hair today, okay? That's why I got a head wrap on, okay? I'm not saying that we... Thank you, Mama J. She says, if the Proverbs 31 woman's husband is known in the gates, you best believe his wife is known. Very good, Mama J. Absolutely. The woman is always known. And if you watch uh, last week's show, we talked about how women are like jewelry. And we broke that down a little bit. That's That means people naturally look at us. You know, I, I, can, I honestly think like you see a man... Okay, he's a man. Okay, whatever. When you see a woman, you look harder because we're beautiful. God made us beautiful on purpose. So absolutely, Mama J. So vanity is not what I'm promoting here. What I am promoting is self-respect and thinking about the way you uh, look when you walk outside. The next thing is your, uh, when I say about your image, it's your body. A lot of women, they get married. They let their body go. They let their selves go. They don't do anything anymore. And I get it. Um when you when you are so comfortable with someone they've seen you in all states i i understand that but uh, we have to remember that men are visual creatures so as a virtuous woman i think it's very important that you don't let yourself slip okay don't let yourself get too fat don't let yourself uh you know get get sloppy don't let yourself uh stop combing your hair and stop putting effort into your appearance however you did you don't have to wear a whole bunch of makeup you don't have to look like you're going to a banquet every day but look like my aunt used to tell me when i was a kid she used to say when your husband comes home make 
you better look like you wanted him to come home is what she said if you're when your husband comes home look like you wanted him to come home meaning he's out in the world he sees beautiful women every day don't come home and you're in uh holes with frying chicken with dresses and holes in it and all that kind of stuff look presentable look beautiful because you're his you're his queen you're his woman you're you're beautiful so yes look like it so she keeps her body she keeps her image and she also keeps herself healthy um I'm talking to myself too okay I'm plus size woman because I eat but we have to do better at what we eat ladies we have to do better at our exercise regimen we have to do better at going to the doctor we have to make uh do better at getting our breast exams do you know how to do a self breast exam do you know your family history are there things that maybe you should be going to the doctor more often for do you have a history of cancer history of you know diseases that you maybe need to go get tested for so she keeps herself she keeps her body if you go down your whole family can collapse because the woman is the glue you know we god is putting a lot of responsibility on us when it comes to keeping the family together so you have to keep yourself healthy spiritually and naturally the next thing is she keeps her seven we're on number seven now she keeps her there's nothing wrong with pulling it in and tightening it up all right mama j absolutely and oh wait i'm gonna tell you the title that god gave me two days ago it kind of goes with your sentence so that's funny i love it number seven is that a virtuous woman keeps her reputation she keeps her reputation going back to the scripture that i said uh her husband is well known in the gates where he sits among the elders of the land so if he's known again remember she doesn't do anything to embarrass him because he's well known everybody knows that's his wife so she's even careful how she um how she represents him how she represents her household how she represents her family she a uh, virtuous woman is not uh uh, she makes better decision of who she hangs out with. You know, she's not with the loud people. She's not with the people who are, you know, drinking and getting drunk and cussing and dancing on tables and doing all kind of crazy stuff. She knows that her reputation follows her and she's careful about that. She keeps her a good reputation. She keeps a good name. Okay. The next thing is eight. She keeps her family satisfied. A virtuous woman keeps her family satisfied. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's really hard to, to do at times because I don't believe in being a people pleaser. You know, that's something that I'm working on in my life, working on saying no, working on staying firm on what I want. But also when you're a mom and when you're a wife, you want to make sure people are happy in your home. So when's the last time you set your kids down and it was like, you know what, how are you? Like, mental check like how are you how you know what can mommy do is there something you want to tell mommy is there something that i need to know like she keeps her family she and thank you mama j i forgot that part mama j says she's agreeing with me but she says also stay calm while doing it absolutely stay calm while doing it so not only are we keeping our family side so we're we're keeping calm we're keeping well you guys is getting late and i'm hungry so i can't talk we are staying calm while doing it absolutely so um and hello miss jackson how are you have you moved already hello hello wherever you're joining me from so um keeping her family satisfied asking you know do you want to see me more do you feel like you don't see me do you feel neglected you know a lot of kids act out in school um when you really talk about when you really talk to them and you get down to the root everybody's situation is different but when you get down to the root a lot of kids are acting out because they they want the attention from their parents and they don't care if it's negative attention as long as they're getting some attention so we've got to be the people that say okay I'm going to keep everyone satisfied to where no, they're not looking for that negative attention. They're not looking elsewhere. Your husband's not looking for things that you should be giving him elsewhere. Ask questions, ladies. Uh, evaluate. Ask how you can help. And, and be open and receptive to what they have to say. Because we, especially as black women, have to be careful about being so defensive all the time. You know, you ask somebody something and they tell you the truth but it ain't the truth you want to hear but that's why we're so quick to snap off that's not how we should be we should be receptive and open to what other people have to say when it comes to our family and running our home so um and good morning pastor e good morning pastor i got two pastor e's on today if alicia's still on i've got pastor e who's my best friend alicia she was just ordained and now i've got pastor erica williams so i got two pastor e's so i'm feeling blessed i got the two pastor e's with me today so that was number eight 
complete. So we've got Keep a Prayer Life. We've got She Keeps Peace. She Keeps Motivation and Vision in the Home. She Keeps Her Mind. She Keeps Her Family Secrets. She Keeps Her Image and Her Body. She Keeps Her Reputation. She Keeps Her Family Satisfied. And now my last, or no, my two more. She Keeps Order in Her Home. A Virtuous Woman Keeps Order in Her Home. Thank you, Evangelist Jackson. I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, yes, a virtuous woman keeps order in her home. And what does that mean? The order should go God first, the husband, the mom, and the children. So when we say, when I say she's keeping order in the house, um, we have to be, oh, this is really like hurting me saying it because I know me, right? I'm a very strong woman. I don't do well with people telling me what to do. Um, I don't do well with, um, taking orders. Like I don't, you know, I'm, I'm me. Can't nobody tell me what to do. Like that's me. But I know that if I ever got married, I'd have to submit, right? Because the word of God tells me to submit. And even that like kind of chokes me a little bit, like right here in my throat. Like I kind of feel it. It hurts a little bit. So this next piece that I was going to say kind of choked me. That's why it took me a minute to say it. Um, a virtuous woman, as we keep order in the house, we have to be an example of godly submission. And yes, I had someone tell me one day, you had to be submit worthy. I agree. Like your husband does have to be that. But at the same time, we have to obey God's word. So Lord, as we're keeping order and as we're obeying you, help us to have the right spirit with it. Help us not to obey with an attitude. Help us. Have... Right. Ugh! Mama G told me to drink that tea and swallow it. I know it's stuck. Let me, let me take a sip. Let me take a sip. I got the tea today. Let me take a little sip. It's oh hurt just a little bit but it's down it's down in my soul now mama j so yes when we keep order in our house um we have to be examples of godly submission of first uh, first obeying the lord and then obeying our the head of our households but i also want to say that i remember when i was a child i asked my mom um uh, i know i know i remember when i was a kid i asked my i asked one of my parents for something and they said no and that's not what I wanted. So I went to the other parent and they said, yes, but somehow my dad found out that I did that, that he either said no or my mom said no. And then I asked the other one and they said yes. And I got in a lot of trouble that day because it wasn't that I, it wasn't that I got in trouble because I asked and I got the answer I wanted. It was because I already got the answer from one parent, which meant you don't go to the other one to try to turn what my father said, turn them against each other. He said, you don't do that. And I got, I, and I think, I don't think I got a weapon, but I got in a lot of trouble for that. And I remember that because I say, we have to teach our children that just because um, us as mothers and we're nurturing and we're loving and we want our ba babies to be happy, if it was said uh, by our husband, no, or the decision of the household was no, we have to make sure that we don't, um, encourage the child to go against the other parent or to encourage the child to go against any type of authority. That's something that I'm seeing often too. And I'm kind of, I'm a little guilty of it. I don't have any kids, but even when my friends tell me stories about their kids, I'm always jumping to the kid's defense. Always. I'm not my baby. You know, not my baby. I told a friend that today. I said, not my baby. And I know she's been telling me the same story for a while. I said, nope, not my baby. I don't see it. Not my baby. You know, but, and we have to be women that, that teach our children to be respectful and to honor all authority, even their teachers at school. We have to teach them, no, the order is when you're not in this house and the other adult is in charge of you, like your teacher, you do what they say. Now, you don't let you teach your child what's, um... Yes, manipulative. That's what I did uh, accidentally to my parents. Uh, I was, yes, that's true. Thank you, Mama J. Yeah, and I got in trouble. I remember that. I remember where my dad was standing. I remember my mom was standing. I remember getting in trouble that day for what I did. I don't remember what I did, but I remember the, 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 the correction that I received. So we have to teach our children uh, to obey authority, okay? Obey their pastors, obey the police, you know, obey commands, obey, um, you know, even the rules of the road. Like, there's there's, there's such a, um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Rebellion now in the land where children are just, you know, you ain't my daddy, I do what I want. Or they're just so strong-headed. So we have to encourage, however we can, encourage our home to stay in order and, and, and make sure they obey and submit to authority. The next thing, the last thing, and this is a physical thing, 
is that a virtuous woman keeps stock in her house, keeps stock in her house. When COVID-19 happened, think about it, ladies, were you one of those women who didn't have no toilet paper in her house? Were you one of those women who didn't have the things that she needed to survive that two week lockdown or whatever the heck we were at first lockdown for were you one of those ones who let your home your your house was without because you did not prepare now i know that we go through financial ups and downs and i know that you know not everybody can store a lot of things but what i am saying is uh, the Bible says that a uh, virtuous woman has no fear for her house when it snows, for all of her house is covered in, in uh, scar uh, scarlet. And then another translation says they all have warm clothes. So what I'm saying is as a virtuous woman, we think ahead. We say, okay, I'm not going to spend all this money, this extra money that we have in the bank account. I'm not going to spend it on, on my closet and, and heels and looking good and makeup. I'm going to get the things that I need in case something happens, my family has what they need. Okay. I know that my kids are growing like weeds. So I'm going to, you know, take this little extra money we have and I'm going to, um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Mama J I'm, I'm working on getting some more stuff out there. So I'm going to take these things that I have and I'm going to buy, you know, some clothes is two sizes up. Cause I know my kids will grow into it. My grandma used to buy my coats. So big as a kid and now i understand you know not having any kids i remember like i'd be like why is this coat so big she was thinking ahead she knew i was gonna grow into it thank you miss grant thank you so a virtuous woman thinks ahead you know what type of food like today i bought a really big ham i know i'm not gonna eat all this in one time but i was thinking ahead i said okay i'm gonna put it in the little baggies i'm gonna put it in the freezer that bone i'm gonna boil the bone and make some ham broth and i'm gonna freeze that ham broth so i always have things on hand so a virtuous woman thinks ahead. She is not, uh, she's frugal. She's not a woman that just throws away money because she knows it's coming. Um, she's wise with it. She's a good steward of what God entrusted her with. And so I'm going to do some couponing videos. Um, I'm going to do some um, saving money and some house hacks. All that stuff is coming in 2023. I promise God has been giving me downloads daily. So don't worry about it. I'm going to help you in being one of the women that can keep stock in their home. So that's our 10 qualities. So let's get to the T, but I'm going to go over them because my numbers are fluctuating, which means people just came in. So number one was we keep a prayer life, we keep peace, we keep motivation and vision in the house, we keep our minds, we keep our family secrets, we keep our image and our bodies, we keep our reputation, we keep our family satisfied, we keep order in the home, and we keep stock in the house of things that we need. And for those of you who are just joining, um, the word keeper, the original translation in Greek actually means uh, keeper, warden, guard, to be aware and watching. So it's not just cooking and cleaning like we sometimes isolate. So the word is O-I-K-O-U-R-O-S, okay? Somebody put that in the chat for me so other people can look it up and get their own revelation as well. So let's go ahead and dig our tea, get our tea. It is cold because this is iced tea. It was really cold. It was like a little chill. It is okay. Number, uh, our letter T, T and R T today stands for our takeaway is there is more to being a keeper in a home than cooking and cleaning. There is more to homemaking than cooking and cleaning. And they were the qualities that we studied today. Our E, our equipment is Titus 2, 3 through 5, which is what I read in the beginning. And you guys know that. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Evangelist Jackson. I appreciate your compliment. Thank you. And A, which is our assignment, is to daily ask God for wisdom on how to keep what he entrusted us with, which is our home, our children, our husband, our family, our job, our, our business, whatever he gave you. Our assignment is to daily ask him for wisdom to keep what he entrusted us with. Okay. I love you guys. I truly, truly love you guys. And I thank you for joining on this evening. I know I'm usually on in the mornings, but I had a lot of feedback today. So maybe we, maybe we should start doing evening shows. I don't know. But um, I will see you next week for Topics and Tea. I'm going to go ahead and release a title. Okay. I usually never release a title uh, one week early because if God gives me something else throughout the week, then I'm like, you know, I'm all over the place. But I believe the title next week for, for Topics and Tea is going to be... Um, Keep it tight and get it right.
keep it tight and get it right okay so we're going to we're going to see if that's the one that god um makes me do next week but the download has been coming and it's super like it's not even what you guys think so i'm excited i'm always excited but i'm really excited okay so i love you guys i will see you next week keep it tight get it right yep mama j and uh, miss erica says good to yes thank you thank you so much for joining us pastor e i've never seen you on live before so i do appreciate you joining us so everyone have a great great rest of your evening and share with another virtuous woman who needs to learn how to be a keeper of her house all right Mwah. love you guys see you later bye bye thanks Lene.